Today we're going to be talking about the question, asking and answering, or hopefully, is grind an accomplishment? Like if you actually put in the time into a game, does that equate to effort? What does it actually mean? Because a lot of these publishers and these community managers outwardly are speaking out about games and specifically we were talking about the Ubisoft response, uh, basically paraphrasing that, uh, you know, that you should feel pride and accomplishment. Very similar to EA's response about the Battlefront 2 uh, unlocks for the Rainbow Six Siege operators, which are notoriously a grind, even if you have the full version. Uh, yeah, no, you should feel accomplished. You know, you should, you should feel good that the game is so grindy. And, you know, if, if it's a little too grindy, you can always spend some money. Uh, I see, I don't like shit like that. I, I mean, personally, I don't. But then again, I do play a lot of League of Legends. I historically have played a lot of Clash Royale. I've played a lot of games like, you know, Smite and uh, you know, World of Tanks to an extent. And I mean, like, I quit playing a lot of those games, minus Smite, because uh, Smite actually had the God Pack, which is amazing, fantastic stuff. But I've quit playing a lot of those games because I didn't agree with the monetization schemes. And Rainbow Six Siege, it's like, I want to play with all the different operators and I really want to play with the strategy of the game, but you made it you made it such a grind. And I don't know, I love the game and I will play more of it. It's just, eh, you know, like for, for someone like me who game hops, but I still take the games very seriously, when you directly stop my progression, because of time investment. Uh, these are games that force dailies or RNG progression or just have like this weird tiered progression like you see in World of Tanks, which is just insane. When I mean, you have shit like that, that time gates me out of a game, I just don't respect it anymore. Uh, that's just my personal opinion. I'm just going to come out and say that. Uh, I do want to ask before I go into the big rant, what do you guys think about grind? When is it acceptable? What games do you accept it in? Personally, I would say it's actually very acceptable at this moment inside of League of Legends because of the style of game that is. It is very much a game where you can just main one champion in one role or all roles or just pick one role and you can unlock all the characters relatively easily and quickly, though I wish it was faster. Um, but in, in the end, I think League of Legends is fine. Would that work in Dota? Fucking absolutely not. It would not work in Dota. That would not work. In fighting games, it kind of works. That's why DLC has been more accepted for longer inside of fighting games, where in shooters, that would not work. Generally. Um, it kind of can work in Quake Champions, I think, to an extent, but there's there's still some dubiousness with that. And what, what is going to actually be the competitive game mode? Because it depends. Regardless, every game is different. Every game plays differently, has a different metagame, and the monetization does affect that. But I wanted to ask you guys, like, it's a double-edged sword, right? I mean, it really is. So Rainbow Six Siege, it's grindy, but then again, it's grindy, so it incentivizes people to spend money, and I guess maybe some people feel some pride and accomplishment, which is, like, it's, it is a literal thing, guys, if you don't realize this. If you guys don't know people who are addicted to Black Desert Online, or Arc Age, or Albion, or a couple of these other sandbox games, um, there, there really is a literal feeling of pride and accomplishment with just putting in time and money into a game. You do feel proud. Uh, and if you think that's wrong or probably a mental issue, debatably it is, but it, it's a thing. So, anyways, um, but because they do have those schemes, they do make it to where, well, the game's free to play. Uh, well, the game doesn't have expansions, doesn't separate the player base, and a couple of other bonuses. But, uh, you know, ends justify the means? I Question mark. Uh, but anyways, I'm just going to be ranting on grind here. Um, and this is not talking about the grind that you see in action RPGs where the game is the grind. Uh, we're talking about where you play the game and you have to play it over and over and over again before you really are playing the game. There's going to be like a lot of MMOs that like basically the game starts at end game, uh, but they make it extremely grindy. Like World of Warcraft, you zip right through it, right? Final Fantasy 14 has the story and then you do the end game. It kind of makes sense a little bit de dubiously, debatably. But there's games like Albion where it's like, oh my God, the whole game is just a big grind day slog fest. Black Desert Online is just a massive fucking grind. And like, it's kind of fun to an extent, but then you get to a point where it's like, okay, if I could just get to a competitive level, oh, I, I never will reach that because everyone is always constantly grinding and I, I just never will reach that point. Fuck me sideways. Better spend some money, boys. And I just, I don't like that shit. So Rainbow Six Siege is another game that, um, well, it's grinding. Uh, it takes a lot to actually unlock these characters, especially if you've been scammed and you bought the starter edition. Now, I believe the starter edition for For Honor is a little bit more lenient, but uh, I don't actually know that as a fact. That's just what I've seen on the internet. I do own For Honor. I do own Rainbow Six Siege. I like both games, but both of those games 
had grindy elements to it just thrown in there and they actually had to tone some of it back because of community backlash. But that's what I want to talk about is these these game companies, you know, as awesome as these the physical games are, as cool and competitive or interesting and unique experiences as they could be, these publishers, the developer, well, I mean, you know, in this case, it's the same. They will <laughs> they will just try to get away with as much as they possibly can. That's just a fact. And fanboys, fanatics, get the fuck over it. That is a fact. And you need to be more vocal about your games. Okay, so next step. These games are grindy. That is just, you know, whether you are okay with it or not, it's just a fact. There is grind in the games. Now, does it justify the ends? Let me know in the comments below. But here's my thoughts. I think that I, I'm just tired of this shit. <laughs> I just, I don't want it, man. These games are making money. These games are doing good. They're not unpopular games. You still buy these, they're boxed games, right? So just sell us cosmetics or do some other things. Sell, sell us, I don't know, maybe single player expansions, story packs or something. I have no idea. I would actually love a story or co-op campaign or some sort of expansion like that uh, inside of Rainbow Six Siege. Could you imagine actually if Call of Duty released first the multiplayer, then you had like $15, you could actually buy the single player, which is actually what Call of Duty did. They have a separate thing where you just buy the multiplayer or you can buy the full game. So what if, what if games actually compartmentalized themselves and you bought like this part, this part, that part, and that way they can expand the game, expand the world, expand the fan base while still keeping each component its own separate thing with its own separate economy so that it incentivizes them to make the best version of that. So, you know, if you have a multiplayer game, you don't separate the player base with expansions and you don't hinder the progression of players through arbitrary time and effort and accomplishment by making the game extremely grindy with the operators, which are the literal core component and unique factor to this game. That, that's what it is. Rainbow Six Siege is a hero tactical shooter. It is really freaking cool, man. It separates itself greatly from Overwatch and Call of Duty and even previous uh, you know, Rainbow Six games and, and Ghost Recon stuffs. Pretty unique, but then you're gating players from actually participating in it. And unlike, I would even dare say, like, Quick Champions or Overwatch, uh, you, like, it's a tactical game, and a strategy game. So it's more like Dota in that respect, where picks and, and bans, I think, should be more important. I think where, you know, the, the character you're playing and how you're playing with your team matters a fuck ton, which is why Overwatch is actually, you know, because you can switch characters at any time, the compositions do matter to a great extent. Um, you know, you can, you have to have all the characters. Same thing with Dota, like, it matters a lot. And I feel like Rainbow Six, it does matter a lot. I don't know, maybe that's just me, maybe because I suck at the game for some reason. I'm good at Overwatch, but I'm really bad at Rainbow Six Siege, so maybe I'm incorrect, but it just feels like the game is less about mechanics, so you can less main a character in this game, and it's really more about teamwork, communication, and you know what goes with teamwork? Is the team composition, the strategy of what operator and what weapons and loadouts you're using, and how you operate with that operator in the operation. Yeah, um, so that that's that's my big complaint is, you know, the, the game's grindy and I don't have a problem with grind, literally grinding like in action RPGs to an extent, even BDO. The grind is fun. It's just I want to get to the real grind, the real gameplay, the real challenge and really push myself as a player. And in these competitive games, often you can't do that until you finally unlock the competitively viable tanks or, you know, unlock the hero classes and all the equipments for your weapon and your loadouts. Otherwise, you're just going in gimped. You're going in not as prepared. You just won't be well suited for the situation. You're just not going to be as good of a player as you could be. And in these competitive games, that basically means you're not really playing the game. So to me, no, I don't like this style of progression. Now, uh, in closing, I will say that, uh, you know, bringing back Call of Duty again, Call of Duty also has progression. Call of Duty even has prestiging. Call of Duty also is kind of like a more casual game. No, 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 I know, I know it's competitive, but I'm saying in the, the online matchmaking, it is very casualized. But also the unlocking in Call of Duty is really freaking fast. Compare Call of Duty's unlocks to Battlefield's, which Battlefield has RNG progression now since Battlefield 3, I believe. They have like, the, you know, the loot packs and like it takes a tremendous amount of time to really get fully kitted on any one class and role. And then, you know, try imagining getting a whole clan, you know, like that and trying to do the big team battle clan wars and stuff on servers like, dude, it's just fucking impossible. And so Battlefield, which used to be kind of a pseudo competitive game, has now devolved real tremendously. So look at Call of Duty, still competitive, still casual, still fun in all ways. It still has progression, you know, th that way it's like a tutorial, which is why I excuse World of Warcraft for its grind, because it's a tutorial you run through. 
And then, yeah. Now, that's not to forgive World of Warcraft's end game grind. That is not cool. Time gating. Effort gating is bullshit. There is no accomplish it. That's why people fucking leave. Uh, but regardless. Anyways, I think there's a way to do grind right. Grind, in, in the sense of accomplishment and, you know, progression, should be more of a tutorial. Like, you know, slowly give the, like an RPG, slowly give the player new mechanics, new stuff to build on. Okay, um, but at a, at a pace that's not fucking like one week of playing a game to unlock any one thing. Hell no. Don't gate it behind RNG like, oh, you're getting stuff. It just has nothing to do with what you need to do. No, no, none of that, dude. None of, none of this bullcrap, you know, addicting mobile as monitors just just fucking stop it guys just stop it i want to play your game and even though i game hop i still play these games as seriously and as competitively as i possibly can and in some games you know i get really good really fast a lot of people do there are people who just play overwatch like literally they play that season and they are on the like they're going into like the collegiate they're going into the competitive scene they're on their way to pro Right, so that happens with League of Legends too as well because you can main certain characters and you can get really good really fast with the games, but I do think that League of Legends isn't the best example. Even though it is a grind based game, you can just main a character, but the best games are probably like Dota. You know, Dota does great. Smite even has a great excuse. You can just buy all the characters. Quake is the same. And with some games, you know, they're not perfect, but it's give and take. And I just feel that there's some games that just very obviously take advantage of what the game is. So yeah. Um, your Rainbow Six Siege should have had a Dota or Overwatch-like uh, monetization scheme because of the type of game that it is, and they specifically chose not to so that they could make more money, and I don't like that shit. So every game's different, every player's different, every meta game has this different interaction with the monetization scheme, I understand, but I think that certain games, it's very obvious. You know, for For Honor and Rainbow Six Siege, those schemes did not fucking work, and they were specifically implemented basically to fuck us over you know to, 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 they kind of perverted the gameplay in some some people would say small way but in some way they perverted the gameplay so they could make more money so that's what i gotta say that's my thoughts and feelings on that nothing against grinding i do know there is pride and accomplishment but i just think there is a way to do it and in almost every case for almost every game they do it in a bad way and you know why because they're greedy fucks. <laughs> so don't let them get away with it. Even if you're a fan of the games, because you're fans, please open your eyes and be vocal. Open your mouths and say something about it. So anyways, I'm going to be playing more Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, I like it a lot. Actually, I'm going to be trying to play more of these uh, other games that, um, you know, these shooters, these competitive games want to jump into a lot of fighting games. I'm going to be doing it. But me spending money on them, you know, no. No, 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 no. I'm not going to be putting in the money, time, and effort into it. I'll play the game. I'll be as competitive as I can, but they're not getting any more out of me than, you know, what what, what I can just throw at uh, in, in the initial purchase. That's pretty much it. That That's my love and passion for these games. Uh, but I'm not going to have love and passion uh, for this pride and accomplishment bullshit. What I accomplish is from my pure skill only, not just how much time and money I throw into a game, but more raw skill, how fast I learn and what I do with that. That's what's important to me. Thanks for watching, guys. Keep the hype alive. I'll see you again next time.